I've recently posted this photo on Instagram showing a large paper bag on which I collaged. I received a few requests to make a video on how I created it, so this is it. Here we are. I will show you how I decorate large paper bags like this, which would make a beautiful gift bag, or you could even make it into a journal cover. I'll also make another large collage on a large envelope like this, which is beautiful for Happy Mail. Welcome, it's Barbara. Let's start out decorating a big paper bag. So I have this one from an organic shop that we have here in uh, Vienna. And this is perfect because we can decorate over this. We could even decorate both sides and this will just be completely transformed once we've done it. So this is a chance to use bigger ephemera, bigger images, bigger book pages that you maybe haven't been able to put in a journal. I have prepared some book pages here that I've been hoarding and what I have chosen is so some of them have beautiful images. I also love black and white images for these kind of projects. I have some children's book images. How adorable is this dough? And then we have this one. This one. But these are all really fun to put on either large envelopes, large boxes, large bags, and they will make such unique gift bags or whatever you make out of them. I love black and white images like this. Love, love, love. Vintage map pages are perfect for this. Here's some more black and white book images random book pages it's great if you have different book pages different fonts maybe even different languages different genres here's something with some math here's a music book page so you can use encyclopedias of course these are edith holden if you maybe have more than one edith holden book maybe this is an option for you i know it's very hard to tear apart edith holden Book pages, I actually got some pages in Happy Mail quite a long time ago, so I, I would not tear these out of my Edith Holden book because I only have one English version. <laughs> these are beautiful as well. And I like combining it, the images, with some napkin images as well. So the one I used on my other bag was from this napkin and I find it so, so beautiful, these mushrooms. I also used a part of this napkin with this cute hedgehog. And on the other side of the bag, I, I used this little guy as well. So we'll see what we'll use. I think I do wanna stick with the autumn, winter kind of theme. So I'm going to first choose some pages without any images. I'll just start I'll just start by taking some like regular book pages. That will be my background. I'm trying to have a variety of different fonts here. and languages and we will add some of that as well the vintage map and I'm treating this like I would just a regular collage except that I'm working with bigger pieces use my no I'll actually use my regular ruler book pages especially vintage book pages are usually better to tear with a ruler than with your paper trimmer because the quality of the paper 
sometimes is very brittle and so your trimmer is going to tear it rather than actually cut it. <laughs> so we could start like this and we could add some map. Don't need the whole thing. We don't need to cover the whole thing. I definitely am going to cover this image here, but I don't need to go all the way up or all the way to the sides because I love the brown paper bag. Definitely want some music in here. Maybe we'll turn this. Not everything needs to be in the right direction. This is a beautiful old German font. A little harder to read. <laughs> Maybe up here I will try to find an image. These of course would be so super cute, but, but they might be a bit small. Although we could put them maybe on another part of the page. Love this guy, that's an option. The Bambi, oh, these are all so cute. My goodness, <laughs> look at the faces. <laughs> of course, these Edith Holder ones are stunning. So this one or this one, I'm feeling this one. So I'm going to tear around this one too because this is of course way too big. And these parts of the book pages, the empty ones, are great for stamping sentiments or words for your junk journal. So it's a good idea maybe not to throw all of these blank pieces away, especially when they're strips like this. They are perfect for stamping something, for embellishing your journal. Okay, so we have this guy up here. I actually don't like that it has straight edges, so I'm going to tear around him. Hopefully not tear his head off. <laughs> Wouldn't be the first time. One tip for tearing, maybe, maybe you don't know this. When you tear away from you, you see here, I, I get a, a, an edge without a lot of white showing. If I would tear towards me, then immediately you see I have a white edge here. So always take into account which way you are tearing if you don't want the white edges. So always tear away from you. That is much better. I'll ink around him a little bit. Since there's a bird and we have more birds here, let's maybe add another one. I'm not sure where yet. Will depend what I put on here, what, what kind of napkin I put on here. So I don't wanna add another bird, that would be too many birds. <laughs> The mushroom, don't know if that's not too big. I do love this mushroom. Let me start by going around the image with my water brush, or you can obviously use a regular brush, but it's good if it has a fairly fine tip. And then you just go around, wow, that was a lot of water. I shouldn't press too hard on this because I get I keep getting water blobs. It's not what I want. Anyway, I'm trying to go around this image so that it tears exactly where I want it to tear. Like that. 
now it's easier for me to see where I need to place it. So I'll do here and here. So now this bird, is it too much? Now we can put it here. I feel like I want to put something here too, just like a plain, plain paper. I mean, I don't mean plain, I mean something with just some script on it that I haven't used, like this one. Yeah, that's better. Let's ink around this one. Could also add some washi. Actually, before we, did, before we deal with the washies, I'm going to glue everything down except our images. So all of these, and then we'll deal with the washies. And I'm going to glue everything down with my glue stick. And to make it easy on me, I'm going to glue top down with a top down method, meaning I'm going to start gluing my pieces from the top because otherwise I will probably not know anymore how I meant for these to be <laughs> to be on the page, uh, on the, paper bag. Of course, you can take a photo with your phone. That might be what I would do if I wasn't filming with my phone. Now let's place our images on here again. Now we can decide where we want some washi. I have this one which was in one of the Your Creative Studio vintage subscription boxes. It's just like a vintage map one, which is really nice. And I'll add some of this, which is a Tim Holtz one. I always like putting mine on the edges of book pages, as you can see, all of the places here that I chose are on the edges of book pages. I think that's enough. So now I can go ahead and glue him down and we can also glue the napkin down. This guy, since it's a bit of a thicker book page, I mean, I could just do it with glue stick, but I think I will just use my three in one glue this time. You could use tacky glue, any, any glue really you have on hand. But just be aware that if this is going to be a gift bag or a bag you use for something else, then things really need to be adhered well because it's going to have some wear and tear. It's not like in your journal where it's protected. And the napkin is gonna go on here with some glue stick. Be sure that you have the whole surface covered where you want to add the napkin to. You don't want any air bubbles anywhere. So now we gently place the napkin on our glue. If it wrinkles a bit, it's totally fine. Adds to the charm. Just make sure it's adhered all the way to the edges. I should have torn along this edge as well. I don't like the straight edge. Maybe I can still tear that. Yeah. That's better. And we've got this little guy. I almost forgot about him. So this is the base of our collage. We will let this dry before we continue. Once everything is nice and dry, my next step is to add a little bit of gesso to dry brush it over. If you don't have gesso, you can use a little bit thinned down white acrylic paint and you just take a dry brush, we'll put some in here and then I'm first going to put it on something next to my, my 
project because I don't want a huge amount on my brush. And this will just be very light. This will just kind of give a more distressed look. I think it looks really nice on the brown bag itself. I think that's enough. So it's it's really a very light distressed code code coat. <laughs> Another fun thing to add would be some stamps. So I just picked some random stamps that I have and I will try to place these somewhere <laughs> I'm using my memento espresso truffle ink now I'm lo not looking for perfect imprints of the stamp at all Next, let's add some stenciling as well. That's always fun. I have some here with some words, which I think are really nice. So maybe we'll do, which one shall we do? Dream is good. Where do we put that? We'll put dream here. And I'm going to use my gilding wax, my copper gilding wax for this. I will link something similar down below for you. If you don't have gilding wax, you could also just use acrylic paint with a paintbrush or maybe even your fingers, I don't know. But I just love this copper, as you might know if you've been watching some of my videos always happy to find an opportunity <laughs> to use it and I think it works really well with this autumn winter theme I do have to warn you though it does not come off the stencil so if that bothers you then maybe don't use wax with your stencil but look how lovely this is Do another one. Maybe let me just clean the back side. Yeah, so even after cleaning it, you see it, it stays on. But I don't really mind because it's a tool for me and it works with or without the wax on it. <laughs> so which other word? Or we could put some numbers. Mm. No, let's add another word. Maybe the wish. We could put that here. Yes, perfect. I think that's enough. I would usually go for three. But I actually think the two this time is enough. Yeah. We could go over it with our blending brush and for example, some tea dye or some vintage photo. But actually at the moment, I'm loving the white contrast that we have going on here, the distressed look. look. <laughs> so I don't think I'm going to change that. So. I think this is done. If you're giving something like this for a special occasion, like you want to put gifts inside for a birthday or Christmas or whatever, of course you could add something saying happy birthday or whatever, either a stamp or a card or something. But I think this is really, really special. If you give this to someone, hopefully they will know that you're giving them something very special. So, and you could of course decorate the other side. I did on the other bag that I made, but I think for this video, 
you get the idea of the bag. So now let's see what we can do with this envelope. I have a padded envelope here, which is good for sending happy mail goodies. And I also have another video linked below for you from a bit longer ago, which talks all about happy mail, how to do it, how to find happy mail partners and how the whole thing works, what you could include, all those kind of things. So check that out if you are new to Happy Mail. I also decorate an envelope with mixed media. So maybe you wanna check that out as well for more ideas of how you can decorate your envelopes. I'm going to use the same method that I used on my paper bag. I'm going to start by picking out some elements. Usually up here is where they put the stamps. So if you don't have beautiful vintage stamps, then take into consideration your piece of art will be ruined <laughs> by some horrible machine stamps or something up here. We're going to be adding address label on here. So this is probably not the best point, not the best place for your focal point either. So these two places should be things that you wouldn't mind being covered up. Whereas we can put images here and maybe even something up here. But we can definitely cover the whole thing. We just need to, oh my goodness, look at this bear. Oh my goodness, he's so adorable. Oh, what a bummer. <laughs> How do you choose? Because even making a copy is not going to be the same as using the original book page. Oh, but he's so cute. He would be a cute focal point. Maybe I will use him. He's just adorable. What else can I use? And these, of course. Oh, gosh. Okay. Maybe I'll use this one. Just maybe the text of this one. Trying to look for different texts. This image, of course, would be amazing if you turn it like this and then you tear it out and put it on the side of your envelope. Absolutely gorgeous, but we're gonna do it like this. I don't know why. <laughs> For a Happy Mail envelope, you should also consider that it could be raining really hard when your package is being delivered. So you don't wanna add anything that can smear, meaning you don't wanna put any stamps on with a non-permanent ink. You don't want to put any prints there from an inkjet printer because that all could be ruined. So original book pages are perfect for this. So for example, I could put this one up here just like that. It's gonna get partially covered up, that's okay. So I can start with this. And this time I'm just going to use my tacky glue. Not sure if that's the best option, but I'm gonna do it. <laughs> probably the worst option. You could also use double-sided tape. Tacky glue is probably really the worst option, but maybe by putting it down thin like this, it'll be okay. The problem, as we probably, as most of you probably know, working with tacky glue is that it makes your paper warp, which is what we don't want. But I think, you know, when you have a thin nozzle like this, I have a feeling it will be okay. <laughs> Uh, we'll see about that. And something that you're gonna mail, you also need to be sure that especially your corners and all your edges are glued down well so that they don't come off in the delivery process. Because I, I don't have the feeling that our packages are being handled very carefully. <laughs> like the, the people working with the mail don't have the same sense of how much love we put <laughs> into our Happy Mail packages. So yeah, don't, don't count on 
things being handled with care. <laughs> okay, this is so this is the other part that's going to be covered up a lot. So I'm not going to be very picky about what I put there. This should be fine. Sometimes I wonder when I go to the post office and uh, office. <laughs> When I go to the post office and I want to mail one of one of these kind of envelopes in which I've put so much love <laughs> that they, they don't even say anything like I wonder how how many or if any they see in their job like I, I don't think there's a lot of people that do what we do so you think that it's very special for them to see something like this they don't ever comment. Has that ever happened to you that they would comment on, on one of your beautifully made envelopes? I would, I would love to know. The most any, any of those people have ever commented to me was, oh, but if I put uh, the stamp on it or whatever, you know, the machine for the postage, then um, they'd have to cover part of my beautiful envelope. And I'm like, yep, I know that. There's no way around it. <laughs> That's the only time it was acknowledged that it was actually something pretty. <laughs> I could almost just put the whole page there like this, but that kind of seems boring. So I'm going to tear around this adorable bear. Sacrifice this beautiful fox. I'm gonna try not to think about it and enjoy the bear. There he is. Then I can still use this part as well. By the way, I can confirm there is no warping when you apply it with a thin nozzle like this one. So that's really cool actually. Look, it's really flat. So that's something to keep in mind. Just want a tiny piece for this part here. I don't want this to be empty. And then we have a nice background. Of course, putting so much on your envelope will increase the weight of your envelope. So be mindful of that as well, because it might mean that your envelope will cost more. Okay, we can add him now. One thing we could do to seal everything in really well is to add some matte medium or some clear gesso is another option. That way nothing will happen to your beautiful package. Next, we can think again, what else do we want to add? This here is a bit empty, so this would be really nice for a stamp. I have these two here, which might be cute. This one maybe for up here. Again, I'm going to use my Memento Espresso Truffle. I don't know how well he's gonna turn out since this is a bubble envelope. So I don't have a flat surface to stamp. So this might be awful. <laughs> Let's see. Oh, not as bad as I thought it would be. It's actually quite okay. Now you might be wondering why didn't I stamp him here? Because I didn't kind of want, it, want him right over the bear's head that I think would have been weird. But maybe I can find something else that will go up there. Let's try this little fella. Where can we add him? No point putting it there because that will be covered. <laughs> we could put him up here. Yeah, that's okay. Let's see what we could add up here. Not, probably something geometric or so, not an animal. How about a ticket stamp? 
This is one that came in the Your Creative Studio subscription box. And one time <laughs> I made the silly mistake of adding this stamp, which is also from the Your Creative Studio box, to one of my envelopes. And I think I had my return address somewhere up here. And I must have put this in, in that vicinity. And it actually came back to me because it said return to... <laughs> Return to. <laughs> I thought that was an actual official stamp. I had to laugh so much. Totally my fault. <laughs> so be careful what you put on your envelope. <laughs> okay, that's good. For the address label, I usually use a scrap paper of some coffee dyed paper but i'm i just see I, I see now that i have this here left over from the edith holden page so i think let's make use of that and maybe tear a piece that we can use for our address label we could even keep that there i, I wouldn't mind I will ink around this. Sometimes I run that through my sewing machine and just stitch all the way around. That's always very cute. But I would not glue this onto my envelope before I write the address on it because I'm very likely to mess up the address and then my envelope is messed up. So it's always a good idea to write the address first and then glue it on. So I just wanna put this here so that I kind of have a feeling for where it's going to go. So that would be here. And now I can decide, do I want to add anything else? I think I again want to add a little bit of gesso. My brush is, is currently wet because I washed it because I recently forgot to wash my other brush and of course it dried and I ruined it. So I was wanted to be sure to wash it this time. So let's see, it might not be so great. Oh, actually it's fine. It's fine, it doesn't have to be dry. It shouldn't be soaking wet, but it doesn't have to be completely dry. This works just fine. I am concentrating on putting it where the book page edges are, where they meet up and around the sides mostly. And I think it's really cool to have some of these envelopes on hand, ready to go, so that when you want to send a happy mail, this is one part that's already done, which makes the whole thing, of course, a lot quicker. I just really love making these kind of envelopes. I wish I had more time for them. I wish I had more time for happy mail. That's enough. I think this white works really well, especially if you have a white envelope like we do here. We could also add some stickers. Could put one right by the address label. I'm not sure I want a gold one. I mean, it would also be cool. Again, with stickers, be sure that they are, they are adhered really well. Otherwise, add some glue to them. I am quite happy with this. I don't know if I want to add some more stenciling. Why don't we add a few numbers? I have this, this stencil here, which is a Tim Holtz one. It's the one that has the lost and found. I will link one of these below in case you need one. <laughs> in case you need one. <laughs> Sorry, if I'm enabling you. I'm gonna use my vintage photo and I'm going to use my soft blending brush for this actually never tried this so let's do it i like the 13. the 
That's quite nice. Could put some more numbers right there. And where else? There's a big two. I like that one. I think we're good. Normally I would have put it here, but I know it's going to be covered, so there's no point. <laughs> I think we're good to go. I think this is a beautiful Happy Mail envelope. I know I would love to receive something like this. The back side is where I would usually add my address, and then after I close it, I would add some beautiful washi here, and you could, of course, also decorate the whole back. Why not? I usually keep it to mostly just the front. So we have a big envelope. You can do the same thing, obviously, with a small envelope. Just scale everything down, use scraps instead of whole book pages. And then, of course, we have our paper bag. I hope this inspired you to be creative with your Happy Mail and your gift bags or making a journal. This would, this would be such a cool journal cover. Of course, I would have done it a bit differently but for example if we would fold this cut off the handles glue this maybe together or leave it as a big pocket this would be an awesome journal cover obviously i would have done everything this way and not this way but just to give you an idea this is one thing maybe that i want to tackle in the near future to make a paper bag journal if you want to see that, let me know in the comments below. Thank you for hanging out with me as always. Love you guys. Mwah, mwah.